One on one on the road. I mean, that's what you try to normally do. And we've kind of done that or better. Um, so we're pleased with that. Glad to get the monkey off our back and, and good to be home. Last home stand of the week of the year. Uh, excited to be back in the sawmill. Feels like a lifetime since we've been back here. And, and uh, you know, it's tr- tough two straight weeks on the road and it felt like it was forever going as far as we did. Um, but. Uh, guys are excited to be back home and senior day wrapping up uh, Saturday night. We're not looking that far ahead, but, um, you know, the season just flies by. And uh, appreciate all the support that, that our fans and our student bodies given us this season. And, and uh, obviously it's not going to end the way that we'd want it to, but we look forward to moving on into the next week, into the, the last season uh, as we move forward into it. So um, exciting times. Uh, players are excited, staff's excited, and, and uh, looking forward to, to finishing off right. You mentioned not looking ahead to that Saturday matchup, welcoming both, or not both, two Utah schools in Southern Utah and uh, Utah Tech. What can we expect from Southern Utah this Thursday night? Well, they're very, very efficient offensively. Maybe the one, one of the most talented offensive teams that, that will play all year long. I mean, they you know, we had to score with 84 to beat them the first time, and and I expect to have to score a bunch of points, which hasn't been in our strength uh, as of late with all of our injuries. So we're going to be really tested on both ends of the floor to become really tighter defensively against a really talented offensive team, and and we really have to become efficient offensively uh, against Southern Utah because they are they play really free and easy. They take you know, quality shots. They've got talented offensive players and spread you out and beat you with a pick and roll. And they got some guys that can make jump shots. They got some guys that can drive the ball to the basket. And, and uh, you know, they got 83 on Tarleton in their last game and, and without their center. Uh, so they really do a good job of stretching you and, and sharing the basketball. Turn it over to media. Yeah, along those lines of as far as uh, Southern Utah, like who are some of their guys that got to look out for to try to stop? Uh, I'm not very good with, with names, but like 25, I think it's West. I'm not sure. I mean, I just go with numbers. Gotcha. But but 25, and you, you have to, you guys can help him with that. He's he's really good. One is really good. Um, you know, between them, I think they average, uh, you know, 30 something points a game. They're 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 two wing players. Point guard's a freshman who's had a tremendous season. Um, you know those three; those three guys, you know, combined are averaging almost forty, close to forty-five points a game between the three of them. They're three three perimeter players, so our perimeter defense, a lot like last week against Grand Canyon, is really going to be challenged, and um, we'll have to really meet that challenge uh, coming in here Thursday night. So we worked today, this morning in practice, a lot of perimeter defense and. Knowing who we got to guard and how we got to guard them, and, and uh, those type of things. Defensively, you know, they present some challenges as far as they play some switching man to man and play some zone that looks like a man, and, and can if you're not definitive in what how you want to attack it, can cause you some problems. And like you mentioned, long time on the road here. How's everyone doing? How, how yeah. So, you know, the adjustment we kind of made was Monday. We really didn't get on the floor. Gave Monday off, per se. Um, we just watched film and lifted weights and, and just had kind of had a chalk talk Monday just because the time we've been away, you know, put such a, not just physical but mental strain on you just to kind of ramp up. So we had, you know, good energy today in practice and good energy for this weekend to make this final push. Um, just because we've just taxed them so much here at the end of March. I mean, it's just been a long grinding season. And um, and then today we went about an hour and a half normal practice this time of the year. And, you know, maybe, you know, go about the same tomorrow as we lead into, you know, this Thursday, Saturday, sir. Especially you get into the year, it's just about your mental mindset more than it is physical. You know, you're not going to get, it's hard to get out of shape or in shape this time of the year. And then obviously, when you're in for the in Vegas and stuff. Thursday, you mean? Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, sorry. yeah. 
So, like, yeah, how, how do you, you approach this any differently than with that in mind? No, I mean, we're just trying to win games. I mean, we know we can go fall anywhere. To, we need one team maybe to lose a game, but we can go anywhere from five to eight. Uh, eight's probably hard to get unless we, you know, don't unless we don't win a game. But you know, high as five if we win both games. Um, you know, we're just we're just trying to win games at this point. Trying to be trying to be our best every every possession, and we put ourselves in this position, and we're just trying to trying to continue to get better. Uh, that's all we're worried about is just trying to get better. The guys know exactly where we're at. We know exactly where we're at, and um, it is what it is. I mean, we're our goal is still to try to get to the NCAA tournament. So we played everybody. We know what everybody has, and uh, that's our goal, Nathan. It's just trying to get to, you know, obviously you got to get to Vegas first, but we feel like we're capable of doing that, and then and and trying to make a run as far as that goes. Coach, uh, you mentioned the last time you played Southern Utah at their place, that two-point win. Um, you talked a little bit about some of their players. Uh, obviously, your team looks a little bit different right now than it did back on January 13th. D do you guys change anything about the way you attack this team versus the last time missing players like Day Day and AJ? Well, we've changed a lot since we, you know, since I was just talking to Debbie Humphreys. You know, I just I asked her. She was talking about the changes in our team. I said, yeah, it's like you not having your setter, your middle blocker. You know, imagine not having that. You know, I mean, that that's uh that's what we're missing. You know, or or you know, it's a it's a it's obviously a, a big loss. We're not crying about it. You know, we just go on about it and, and uh but that's that's where we are where we are as a team. We have we've changed uh, dramatically with our team since we play Southern Utah, you know, offensively, try not to change a whole lot defensively, but we've had to because of the personnel that we have on the floor. Um, you know, and, and you hate resetting your team mid-conference with personnel. I mean, that's, you know, and I think as this season's kind of gone along, and I think we've seen this, people have figured out the weaknesses that we don't have at this point and picked on some of the weaknesses you know, we could we could scheme it up and hide some of those things. We got good coaches in this league, and there's only, and we're just kind of putting band aids on as we get picked on from game to game, so to speak. And we we solve that problem one game, and then it exposes another one. So um, it hasn't been much fun, you know. And and then Grand Canyon exposed some other weaknesses Saturday night, so we try to fix some of those today, and so hopefully those won't get exposed uh, uh, this week as well. And then last two games, I think Latrell averaged about 20 a game over the last two. And really good offensively from him. I know we talk about him quite a bit with AJ's absence and him kind of taking over that one spot. But just talk about this past week, just how good he was for you. Yeah, Latrell. You know, Latrell got a lot of bunch of shots. Was efficient. Um, you know, played a key role in our success Thursday night for sure, as well as others. Um, and excited for what the numbers and stuff and leading us to victory. On Thursday night, and his stick to itiveness, um, you know, it's it's encouraging for him playing a different position. His growth and and uh, will help him, you know, down the line as a uh, not only a collegiate player but professional player. It's a position he's got to play, and uh, happy that he's growing into that. And you know, I think he's excited about it, and I think our team's excited about his growth. So it's been good. Got two more for you, Coach. Um, Admits the road trip, uh, Nigel Hawkins, former Lumberjack, uh, got to sign a professional contract. I don't want to push you the pronunciation. I think the Pioneros Club in Mexico. It's pretty good, Hunter. It uh, just rolled off your tongue. Yeah, uh, somewhat fluent. Um, talk about uh, the success of having Nigel sign a pro contract down in Mexico. Yeah, it's always great when you have former players that you know reach their goal, reach their dreams. I mean, we've yet to have a senior here not play professionally. So... You know, it's great that Nigel was able. To, you know, he's such a, a, a such a great young man and and SFA graduate, and just a testament to his, you know, love of the game, his stick to itiveness, and his overcome major injury, and and uh, just really proud for him. He's earned it. He's done it. Um, happy for him, and and just you know, another guy gets on the wall. He's a pro player, and and. Uh, Yes, really, he's always got a home here, you know, but he's he's just a, a great, 
representative of Stephen F. Austin and his family. Just Nigel Hawkins, a great, great kid. And then the matchup on Thursday against Southern Utah, and then on Saturday for Utah Tech, cram the Coliseum, but also Senior Day as well. I know it's an emotional time for the program. I believe honoring two players, A.J. Kajust and Frank Stain. Uh, I know Frank has been here for this season and obviously A.J.'s injury, but still a huge uh, pivotal point for the program. Talk about those two. Yeah, Frank is, is, uh, uh, is you know, came here as a grad transfer and spent a short time. Wish we had more time with Frank. He's, he's uh, the people who have gotten to know him is you know, just brings a smile to your face and, and has had some great moments here and, and uh, wish wish we could have spent more time with him, but have enjoyed every second we've been with him. And then AJ, obviously, he's gone through a lot this year, uh, did not have the senior year. We would preseason all league player, you know, has knee surgery, then breaks his elbow in the CBU game. Um, you know, just for him is not the script he would have wanted to have, but it's going to get a degree from Stephen F. Austin. It's going to, you know, both of them will end up playing pro uh, somewhere. And, uh, you know, just disappointed for, for A.J. because he has, has won so much before he came here. And we all see how much he's meant to our team. Um, you know, it's just a loss that, that – you know, we really couldn't overcome to have a chance to win the conference championship and, and uh, you know, regular season-wise. And, and, you know, we've missed him dramatically. We miss his energy, we miss his spirit, miss his toughness, his ability to create baskets for everybody. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a loss for our, our guys that we've, we've, we've overcome to a certain degree, but you can't replace a guy like A.J. Kajus mid-year. For final chances to catch the Lumberjacks in Nacogdoches this regular season, Thursday night against Southern Utah, and then Saturday afternoon against Utah Tech. Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks, Hunter. We hope to see everybody out here this week, and it's the last time to catch us for another eight months. But we appreciate everybody's support and, and uh, look forward to great crowds this week. Axum. Awesome. <laughs>